The following excerpt is from the personal logbook of Christopher Columbus on his first voyage to the Indies as edited by Bartolomé de la Casa. Friday, October 12th. Two hours after midnight, land appeared, some two leagues away. They took in all sail, leaving only the mainsail, which is the great sail without bonnets, and lay close hauled waiting for day. This was Friday, on which they reached a small island of the Lucayos, called in the Indian language Guanahani. Immediately, some naked people appeared, and the admiral went to shore in the armed boat, as did Martin Alonso de Pinzon and Vicente Yanez, his brother, captain of the Nina. The admiral raised the royal standard, and the captains carried two banners with the green cross, which were flown by the admiral on all his ships. On each side of the cross was a crown surmounting the letters F and Y for Ferdinand and Isabella. On landing, they saw very green trees and much water and fruits of various kinds. The admiral called the two captains and others who had landed in Rodrigo Escobedo, recorder of the whole fleet, and Rodrigo Sanchez de Segovia, and demanded that they should bear faithful witness that he had taken possession of the island, which he did for his sovereigns and masters, the king and queen. He further made the required declarations, which are recorded at greater length in the evidence there set down in writing. Soon, many people of the island came up to them. What follows are the admiral's actual words in his accounts of his first voyage and the discovery of these Indies. In order to win their friendship, since I knew they were a people to be converted and won to our holy faith by love and friendship rather than by force, I gave some of them red caps and glass beads which they hung round their necks, also many other trifles. These things pleased them greatly and they became marvelously friendly to us. They afterwards swam out to the ship's boat in which we were sitting, bringing us parrots and balls of cotton, threads and spears and many other things, which they exchanged with us for such objects as glass beads, hawks, and bells. In fact, they very willingly traded everything they had, but they seemed to me a people very short of everything. They all go naked as their mothers bore them, including the women, although I saw only one very young girl. All the men I saw were